Welcome, viewers, and thanks for tuning in to WACA TV's new business series, True Business Ownership with Rita Coco. I'm Rita, and I'm your host of these series. In every single episode, which happens monthly, we bring to you business best practices that will have you make a better business without the stress, without the suffering, and certainly without the sacrifice. And we call this kind of business growth through business ownership. And yes, every month we bring in a special person, a special expert who knows how to take these business practices and put them into your organization so you can have the business you want. So today's topic is how to have, how to use online marketing to grow your business. And today with me is Christine Jones, who is the owner of Crush It Marketing. She is an online marketing and search engine optimization expert who helps business owners identify and utilize the most effective online platforms to grow their business. Let me welcome you, Chris. Thank you, Rita. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you, Chris. I know how great you are already with all the coffees we do. It's just a matter of letting these folks know how great you are. Give me a minute to, yeah, she's got her coffee ready. I have, I've already had all my coffee. I'm on to water now for sure. So let me take a moment, Chris, and introduce you to our fellow viewers. First of all, Christine Jones, as I mentioned, is the owner of Crush It Marketing, Inc., and it's a company she co-founded with her husband, Brian, 12 years ago. Crush It got its roots from years of trial and error. We know that all as small businesses here, and um, her experience is through online marketing for Brian's family distribution business and also e-commerce website. Chris brings real business experience. I know that firsthand. To all of the noise that's out there that many business owners are overwhelmed by, so that many uh, options um, that come in through our digital world can be so confusing to us, she keeps that noise down to a minimum. While Crush It offers full digital marketing services, Chris's experience is in these areas lies in SEO, search engine optimization, Google Maps, which you'll be hearing about today, and also customized online marketing strategy, which we all need. And 2023 is right around the corner. We need it so much in this time. Chris helps her clients identify and utilize. This is so important. The most effective platforms to grow online, to grow their business. And keep in mind the word effective to be able to choose the right one within the budget you have is so, so, so important. So now that I've introduced you, Chris, welcome again, and let's get going as soon as um, you're ready. All right. Thank you for that great introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. Okay, Chris, here we go. I'm, I'm ready with my questions. And of course, I'll have more as I start to listen to you, but uh, I mean, this is this is maybe an easy one for you, but maybe not so easy for us. Exactly what is SEO? So SEO is actually, it stands for search engine optimization. And basically all it means is that you optimize a website so that the Google bots can read your website better. So Google is literally just a bunch of robots. It doesn't <laughs> see pictures. It doesn't see beautiful graphics. So what we do is we speak to the robots in a language they understand to help your website rank better. So when someone is searching for your products or services, they will see your, your website results. So typically we talk about search results being, so there's paid ads, sometimes there's a Google map, and then those websites that rank just below that map are typically your organic um, search results. Okay. Talk to me about Google Map because, I mean, I hear it, Chris. My um, Our viewers hear it. But well, what is it exactly? Yeah, the Google Map, it's, so it's a visual map that actually shows up. And what we're finding is that Google's expanding showing this map for many different types of things. So it used to be, if you're looking for a hair salon, 
in Holden, or you're looking for a plumber near you, um, that this map would show up and those three little red precious pinpoints would show up. Um, but now we're seeing that it's showing up for all kinds of search results. So that Google map has become really the holy grail um, for most businesses online. Okay, so I get that. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, you, but let me know, let me say I can remember searching for something near me, and I can remember saying, okay, specifically, sometimes even search on myself, which is not a bad thing, I guess, and um, and seeing those little dots, but mm -hmm. I never realized, oh, so that's the Google Map. So tell me more about um, this uh, Google Map and why it's the Holy Grail. Yeah, so like I said, it has become that holy grail for local businesses. Um, they're oftentimes on a phone. That will be the only thing that shows up, and you have to really scroll down. It only shows three businesses, so getting into that what we call three-pack um, has become a really important strategy for our businesses. So it's really important if you're a service area business, like a plumber or an electrician, but it's also important for brick-and-mortar businesses. So if you're an attorney or you're a chiropractor, um, and so those those little points are called your Google business profile. They've changed the name like 12 times. I'm going <laughs> through all the different name changes. <laughs> okay. um, and, and some people have claimed it and put the information in there. But oftentimes businesses show up just because Google is aggregating data about your business. So you can show up there even without that. Um, so this near me with everybody using phones now it's become extremely important because that map is very um location oriented so for us it's been a game changer because what i really love about google maps is it allows a lot of the smaller companies to compete with the big companies online wow wow i like that because i'm a small business and um you're a small business and a lot of our viewers we hope our small businesses because this is what it's our show is targeted to. So I get it about Google Maps, but I have another question that um, is related to, I guess, SEO, but here goes. It's a silly question, I think. Of course, you're going to say no silly questions. I get it. But how does a business owner know if their website ranks? How do, how do we know that? I mean, it's mis it's a mysterious world out there to us. There's a novel to you, you and, and your partner, uh, Brian, but for us, it's just, huh? It, it is, it is. So Rita, that's actually a very, very good question. And the truth is, is it can be very difficult to know if your website ranks. So your, your computer, your phone, Google remembers all of your search history, websites you visited, where you're located, Maybe you've interacted with a company, you know, on social media, things like that. So we have to use tools that actually strip all of that out to determine if your website is ranking. Um, and one of our newest, coolest tools is actually um, for Google Maps, because that used to be very difficult. It literally will, will produce different results in, in a different part of a town. And the various different keywords will pr produce very different results. So that... Um, that new tool has been very helpful for our clients. But I always say the real way to know if your website is ranking is, are you getting leads from your website or from other online properties? Okay. Okay. So, all right. I get it that you've got the great tools and I know you would. And I get that um, we, um, you know how we're ranking. And I also get that we know because we're getting leads. So now <laughs> I, another question is, all right, we're getting leads, but where are they coming from? I mean, we're, 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 they're raining down. Hopefully they're raining down on us. <laughs> but, you know, we've all been taught somewhere if we've been in business long enough, know where thy leads come from. It's like, OK, out there somewhere. Help us with that. Close our blind spot here, Chris. All right. So traditionally, um, online leads will come through like a, a contact form on your website, or you, mm -hmm. might, you might get a phone call and you ask them how they found your name and they'll say they found you online. Um, Google Business Profile actually does have a dashboard now that has pretty good information. So a lot of times if they find you through that map, they won't even go to your website. They'll just call you. So you can, a, a business owner can actually, if they've claimed their business profile, go in, see how many calls and how many um, clicks have gone to your website.
But the most difficult question is honestly, how many leads are you losing to your competition? Okay. You realize I don't want to hear that question because no one does. <laughs> I don't want to hear that question because no. I'm still focusing on what's coming in, all the mana that's coming from, you know, online heaven, so to speak. And now I'm not thinking about, see, it's the I don't know, I don't know, Chris, that, okay, yes, I know I have competition. Yes, there's alternative um, organizations out there, solutions, as I call them. But I'm not thinking, ooh, I'm not counting what's not happening. So tell us more about that. Um, how, what, so tell us more about this um, losing to the competition. So, you know, a lot of people ask, do you, do you have to have SEO? You know, right. is that something everyone has to have? And my, believe it or not, my, my answer is no. You may be surprised to hear that. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, there's, I'm glad you made those two connections because um, you're thinking about your competition, but that SEO in some cases, well, everybody just thinks, oh, well, we have SEO and that'll take care of it because we'll be really at the top of everything. And now you're saying uh, not everybody needs SEO. So tell us more about that. All these new pieces that you're dropping in on us, Chris, <laughs> tell us more about that. It gets more complicated, right? So <laughs> the, the truth is, is if you're selling donuts or cupcakes, or you have, you know, you're a photographer, you take beautiful baby pictures, usually a strong social media presence may be all that you need to keep your customers coming in the door. So I follow some local companies, the Queen's Cups and Rocco's on Instagram. <laughs> and every day I get these beautiful pictures of cupcakes and donuts and baby pictures in my feed. And that's all I need to, to keep them top of mind and to remind me of what they sell. Um, now, should they also rank in Google so that you can you know, find where they're located and be able to find their contact information or maybe get to their menu? Absolutely. But for their particular business, their resources are better spent on social media and having those beautiful pictures day in and day out. Now, if you're a plumber, and I have a plumbing emergency, I'm not going to go to social media to look for a plumber. I'm going to go onto my phone and say, help, how do I find a plumber near me? So that's where that Google Maps, you know, really comes into play. Um, so there's also times that SEO is just plain too competitive. You might be in a niche that you're up against such big, powerful websites that, you, you know, the return on investment may not be there to invest in SEO to be competitive enough. So that's a time when we look at alternative um, digital marketing. It might be social media ads or email or other forms of digital advertising to reach your audience. So we also, we always start by asking a very important question. Do people know that your product or your services exists? Because if they don't, then there might be other marketing channels that will increase awareness that that product or service is actually available. And that's why you do this online marketing strategy, because we're coming with, we want more. And of course, people know what we're all about. And then asking that simple question, how much are we all about, is really important. So I love that you said in the front, yes, I do online um, marketing strategies, because that's where you ask the questions. Um, we, we constantly, I know you do an assessment where you're constantly asking us what we don't even think to ask ourselves. So yeah, um, this begs the question, you know, I could be here, I could be there. I got, um, well, first let me, I got an email from someone who said, you know, we need to talk about your, I don't even know the person and we could be doing this, this, and this. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. whoa, you know, we get, as small businesses, we get uh, bombarded by, um, everybody to other people who know this online stuff about what we need online. We need our website. We need a, 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 we need social media. We need video. We need blogging. You know, this is pretty overwhelming for someone who is not thinking every day, what do I need online? So Chris, how do you help us determine um, which efforts we uh, will reach our target audience, which, you know, where do you start for us? Help us out here. 
Yeah. I mean, business owners are constantly getting bombarded by all these different companies. I mean, I get the emails myself and I'm like, do you even know what my company does? Because why are you emailing me about SEO? So they're telling you, you need to do this to your website, or you should be advertising on their platform. Um, you should be blogging and have content, have a strong you know, social media presence. People will talk about video and all kinds of other marketing. So there's really no end to all the different types of strategies and platforms that are available today. And the good news is there are lots of different ways to be successful. And there's really a, like one cookie cutter approach that's going to work for every you know, single business and, and, you know, find, get those leads. And more importantly, you want those leads to turn into sales revenue, because in the end, we don't really care how many leads you get. You want to make sure you're getting more business and getting more sales. Um, so unless you're a larger company that has the resources, you know, budget, staff, and all that to be in all the different places that you need to be, most business owners, they really need to focus, you know, like determine which online platforms are going to give them the best um, use of their time, their resources, and of course, their budget. So that's why you say the best effective platform that's mm -hmm. built for your business so that we are definitely coming to you with our budget, saying this is what we've got, what can you do based on where we are? So where do you start with us? Chris, where, where, where does this strategy begin? Tell us how you get going with us. That's a great question, Rita. So traditionally with any, you know, any size company, we start with something we call brand protection. And that phrase can mean different things to different companies, especially different size companies. But brand protection is really what's showing up on page one when someone searches for your company by name. Um, and if you're a local company and you're not a large, you know, corporation, you're going to put your name plus whatever city you're located in. Um, so that's the first thing that we look at when you search by name for your business. So it's called brand protection. So if our business owners who are watching today do a search on their business online, what are we supposed to be looking for? What are they supposed to be looking for? Okay, I did it. Here's my name. Now what? What now? What? What's a good what's a good look at our company? What does it make it what shows up such that we have this thing called brand protection and, and it's a good brand or or I'm protected or something like that? So tell us more about what do we look for? So there's a there's a lot of different factors, but they, there are a few key things that we are looking for when we do this. So does a Google business profile show up with your name and a picture and contact information and all that? Does it when you search for your name plus your city, does that show up? Um, is your website the first organic result for for website results? Um, are we seeing, you know, your location and contact information? That's really important. Can they find you? Um, and then are there any brand confusion issues? So what that means is, are there similar, similarly named businesses that are showing up that might cause confusion for someone finding you? This happens a lot. Wow. So I'd be concerned. Uh, it's a great concern if I'm not the only one showing up at the same time and, and can this be confusion and I'm sure our owners say oh my goodness you know I don't need four other HVAC companies showing up at the same <laughs> time so so I get that concern so tell us more about what happens here with that concern yeah so after we look and see like the the brand protection um now we're looking to see what's showing up in the search results so what reviews are showing and what which which ones are Google choosing to show up for your you know potential customers? Are there any past complaints? Uh, maybe there's a news story tied to your business that you may or may not want to show up when someone's searching. So we kind of call that aspect of it reputation um, management. But the good news is that SEO can help with all of those types of issues. Well, thank goodness for that, because I have no idea if my brand's broken. I've got it. As soon as I get off, of it, <laughs> I'm back typing away. So back to my question about um, how we 
and our viewers today determine which platforms are the best for our particular business. After looking at brand protection, after looking at this um, reputation management and particular issues, what would be next, Chris? All right, so let's start with the basics of what I like to refer to as the different types of leads online. Um, so again, we're going to start with are people actively searching for what you offer? Do they know that your product or service exists? So mm -hmm. Google search leads are for those people who are actively searching for what you sell. And that's why, and I'm a little biased, we think these are the best types of leads online. So even Google ads, which don't convert as highly, at least that audience is, is searching for what you offer. Um, so people are actively looking you know, for what you're paying for ads for, if they're, if they're set up correctly, which that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I bet that is. <laughs> okay, right. only so much right. time here, Chris, I know. right? So, 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 so social media um, leads, on the other hand, are what I like to refer to as disruption marketing. So you are in their feeds, you know, they're scrolling and you're in their feeds reminding them of what you offer, what your brand is, and what products or services you sell. Um, and then the third type of leads is video. It kind of crosses both boundaries um, because if there's a strategy, it actually can help with your uh, organic search um, and, can, and convert into an SEO lead, but uh, videos are obviously great for social media leads as well. So I so get it about um, uh, disruption. It's uh, in fact, you know, we're all, well, not all of us, as you point out, might be on Facebook, but we never really think about it as a disruption that we're, you know, getting in there and getting in front of people. So I love that terminology and the terminology you have been using and explaining, Chris, I really enjoy the, I know you're probably thinking algorithms, but it's so important for people to hear the clarity behind and the simplicity of us knowing why do we go to an SEO person? Why do we go to an online marketing person? And it's becoming crystal clear. And I've had many coffees with you, how, <laughs> how easy it can be to understand and to know how to plan ahead with you by our side. So um, a, but a bit more about um, platforms for us, please. It's helpful. So the next step is you want to see what platforms your true online competitors are. So what a lot of business owners don't realize is that the people that you consider your competitors day in and day out uh, in the field are not always the same competitors that are, are getting all the leads online. So oftentimes we're able to identify a smaller competitor um, that you may not be that aware of, but they're getting the lion's share of the leads online. Okay, you know I'm in shock. So I know who my my competitors are, but you are probably going to say, yeah, Rita, but there are others that you don't know. See, that's to me is closing our blind spots. Thank you so much for that. But continuously, I'm always surprised to know that. And um, tell me how, you know, why is that so surprising? Is it that we don't know um, what we're, uh, who, about our online presence and who else is out there? Well, oftentimes it's because, you know, like I said at the beginning, you don't really know where your website ranks because your results are skewed when you're when you're searching yourself. Um, so it's always surprising. But when we start working with a new client, we always re research both the competitors that they name for us. We see what online platforms they're utilizing. Um, but then we also will identify the true online competitors. Um, in their particular industry or in their particular location. Okay, so I get that about um, our competition. So now let's talk about reaching our target audience. I'm looking at our time and we've got about um, uh, three more minutes. So let's see what we can do with those three more minutes. But let's talk about how do you, once we reach that target audience, how do you help us convert to sales or do you even help us convert to sales, Chris? Yeah. So, you know, obviously the first step is getting the right types of leads for what you're, you're selling. Um, and then you need to make sure that the process is clear, that 
you know, once they go to whatever action you're giving them, that they they know what to take the next step. So conversion optimization is a whole other conversation in itself because there's so many, as you know from marketing, there's so many different factors, but we'll just start with a, a few. If you rank in the Google map, do you have reviews? Do your competitors have reviews? Is something, you know, kind of bad showing up? How does your review rating um, compare with the others in the in the map? Even if you consider that you're a referral-based business, people are going to go and check you out online. So what's showing up when they go and search for you? You know, when they click on your website, um, is the call to action or next step clear and easy to find? Oh, wow. This all makes perfect sense. So tell us more about, um, um, well, what if someone sends us over to uh, uh, our you know, um, one of my referral partners sends a referral. Um, how, what what are we supposed to do in that case? You know, what should our website look like in that case? Well, you know, it's it's very important that your website be clear on what you offer. I, I see that mistake. There's cutesy marketing types of slogans and images that you may have fallen in love with, but they don't actually represent what you sell. So make sure it's clear what your offer is, and make sure that you are next step is clear. So true success online is to have that steady stream of, of leads, whether it be calls, contact forms, submissions, or you know if you're an e-commerce site, sales, obviously. So that's when you're truly using online marketing to help your keep your sales funnel full and using it to be that 24-7 salesperson um, you know, online. Wow. I know there's so much more we can talk about, but I know we're we're getting close to time here. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We are. So um, I've got a final question that I need to to ask, and um, and I um, I'm really putting you on the spot on this one, Chris. So out of all the things you talked about this morning, what is the number one and only one thing that we can do as business owners, the viewers out there, myself? What can we do to improve our online presence? One thing. You know what? It's actually easy. So whether you heard me speak 12 years ago or you're hearing me speak today, get reviews. It is the number one thing that any business owner can do for their business to help your business forever. So, you know, if you're a local business, obviously the Google reviews, Yelp might be important for your industry. Um, but, you know, getting those types of reviews or if you're a bigger company, testimonials will work for your business forever. Wow. Okay. I think that's easy. And that's on us. We can do that. We can go and can you give us a review or, you know, the Google review. So Chris, this is, um, I know I have to do wrap up now, but it's been so great, great to have you. You've been clear. You have insights. I can see my own blind spots when it comes to online marketing, shrinking, shrinking. And as I've said several times here, this is not my first round with Chris. So I'm learning and learning and I couldn't resist having her as actually my last guest of 2023. Thanks so much, Chris, for joining us. I'm honored to be your last guest. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. So good news, everyone. Chris's information is below this um, TV show when you scroll and um, you can contact her and she can talk to you about whether or not she can be of service to you. Please reach out to her. She is a wonderful person to have by your side when it comes to online marketing. And this is session 12 of 2022. It's been a wonderful ride. I thank WACA TV for their time and um, for offering this to uh, folks in their uh, geography. And also they put up each one of these 12 episodes on their um, website. So please, if you love what you see here, there are more of those um, 11 other folks have come and joined us. So please take the time um, to watch them before the new year is out. So have a great rest of 2022 and probably see you in 2023. Take care, everyone.